Our guest on the pod today is Keith Braxton. The New Jersey native is in his second season of international basketball following four years at St. Francis University. He started his career in Israel and is playing this season in Belgium, where he joins us from today. But we have a lot to get into with Keith, so let's welcome to Expat Hoops. Welcome, Keith. Welcome. Thank you for having me. You know, I'm just excited to you know, talk basketball and you know, let's just get into it. For sure. And you have a really pretty unique background that hits a lot of uh, interesting points that we haven't really gotten into with a lot of other people. But we'll start off, um, you know, your college career was great. We could certainly go through all the accolades, but we've actually got a lot to hit in college that kind of relates to your next step. And we'll start with the Italy trip in 2019. Um, we were talking a little bit off the pod about how, um, in terms of getting acclimated to overseas basketball, what was this trip like for you and how did you find it helpful to where you are today? Um, yeah, I think that trip helped me a lot. You know, it was really my first taste of, you know, the overseas lifestyle and overseas basketball system. So we played a couple of Italian teams and we ended up playing the Netherlands um, National B team. So it was cool, you know, just to see the rule changes, you know, the difference of physicality of the game, um, you know, the different IQ in the game. So just having that early on, you know, as I was in college, helped me a lot to prepare. You know, also just this travel, you know, see all the sites. You know, I really kind of fell in love with traveling at that time, too. So it was kind of cool, you know, be able to travel and play basketball at the same time. So as far as the school or like the the coaching staff and how that trip was arranged, do you think that that was something that either that they helped you with or do you think it was something that you kind of realized that, wait a minute, I can do this on my own in terms of uh, kind of setting the stage for what you're doing today in terms of off the court and traveling? Yeah, I think I was a little bit of both. You know, the coaches, they kind of set us a curfew, you know, at nighttime, making sure we're not out too late, making sure we're up early for the games. Um, with the diets, you know, we had a great athletic trainer over there. He always made sure we were putting the right things inside of our body, you know, hydrating, you know, getting protein and stuff. So, but also at the same time, you know, college prepared me as well, you know, being able to be organized, you know, being by myself. So just the combination of that, I think helped me a lot, you know, to get ready for the overseas lifestyle. And, you know, just without them, you know, I don't know, you know, how much further I would be now, but it's definitely paying dividends. So it's an actually an interesting point in terms of how that was the introduction to the overseas game for you. But this is one of the really key aspects that I think that makes you pretty unique in terms of people that we've talked to on this podcast. So 2019, you do the overseas trip, you go through your season collegiately. But mm -hmm. after that season, you actually declared for the NBA draft, um, mm -hmm. didn't hire an agent. So you're able to kind of go through the process. Uh, we had just talked off the pod a little bit that at that point in time that you thought that, you know, if there was going to be something professionally that you thought the G League was probably going to be more your route. But if you could kind of talk about that, not only in terms of what the process is like for somebody going through it, even if you decided to go on the G League path or stay stateside, also mm -hmm. versus how it kind of laid the groundwork for you in terms of deciding, you know, what maybe overseas is the right route for me. Yeah, um, you know, I just knew, you know, going into college, you know, playing the way that I was playing, you know, helping my team win. You know, I just thought, you know, I was one of the top tier players. You know, it's always been a dream of mine, you know, be a professional player. But, you know, more importantly, you know, the NBA, that's always, you know, a young basketball player's dream. So that's what I decided, you know, just to clear from the draft, you know, see where I was, see what I needed to work on to be able to get to that level. And it's not easy, you know, training, you know, you're trying to get into the best of the best, you know, a certain group of people that are there. And, you know, I was able to trade in Vegas. Um, I went down there and just went down there for like two weeks. I ended up working out just, you know, twice a day. Um, I ended up getting a workout with the 76ers. So I was able to fly back, you know, close to home and have a workout, you know, talk with some of the training staff, some of the people over there. And, you know, it just helped me a lot with my game going into my senior year. Like, it helped me see what I needed to work on. And, um, you know, at that point, I was like, okay, yeah, maybe the G League might not be for me. But, you know, overseas might also be an option, too, like. So that really helped me, you know, just get a vision of kind of what path I wanted to take and, you know, just of keep putting the work in to get there. So this is also probably a question that I I have probably as somebody that goes through that process. You know, you've had a really good college career, but also when we're talking about the NBA, we're talking about like what, you know, a few hundred people that are in it. And, exactly. you know, some of these people hang on for 10, 15. I mean, uh, that's obviously towards the top, but. Basically, my point is, at any given point in time, if you really start looking at the NBA numbers and the amount of small people, the population that it actually is, and we're also glo drawing globally, it is incredibly difficult to get there. Um, so when you're going through the NBA draft process and some of these teams probably, 
I don't want to say they're not genuine in adding somebody else, but depending on a team's needs, if they're good, they're full, they're not really looking at adding somebody. Mm-hmm. What's kind of the feedback like? Is it, you know, in terms of the the brutal honesty of it, in terms of, is it something that you really get back and you're like, wow, that maybe hurts, but that's good to hear. Yeah, you know, that's what I always wanted. I just want the honest, you know, opinion of what I need to work on, what I get better at. Um, what they were really telling me was that, you know, because in college, I kind of played like the one through four. So because I was a great rebounder. So sometimes I play the four, do the pick and pop. Um, but they just told me that I have to be more of like a point guard uh, playing the one and two, you know, being my size. You know, I wouldn't be able to play like the three or four, obviously, at that level. But so, you know, that summer I started working a lot on my ball handling, um, trying to be a point guard more. And also just my shooting. Um, I shot you know, usually pretty good percentages in college, but it wasn't a high volume. So. Had to be able to just, you know, become a shooter, be able to be a point guard at that level. So those are the two things that I really focused on and what I really heard coming back from the um, the draft combine or the draft uh, process. So um, this all is kind of leading up to you graduated in 2020. Uh, you've gone mm-hmm. through not only an international trip with your school, uh, you've gone through the NBA draft process. Uh, but there's this little thing called COVID that we're still technically dealing with. Yeah. But at that point in time, it was what the heck do we do with this? Uh, take us through what it was like <laughs> having a promising start, or like what looks like a promising start to your career where you probably are going to have these opportunities, but you graduate right in the midst of COVID. And how did you navigate that? Because uh, for anybody that's not familiar with your timeline, you actually really kind of get started in about 2021 in terms of actually mm-hmm. signing on to a club. It's not like you did nothing during that period of time, but what did that look like for you in terms of what doesn't necessarily make it on your bio and trying to get where you are today? Well, you know, COVID was just you know, a terrible time for everybody, you know, just the illnesses and you know, how much it affected people. But you know, also at the same time, my career was you know, pretty detrimental as well. Um, you know, my team, we made it to the championship three times for the um, – the conference tournament but even if we would have made it in 2020 the tournament ended up getting canceled because of covid so that was kind of my first taste of that and they sent us home from college after the spring semester so i didn't get to finish you know say my goodbyes to most of my people and my friends you know that i grew the four years there with and you know just going into covid it was tough uh, they took away you know no portsmouth that was canceled for the year um, the 3v3 that they always had with the seniors that ended up getting canceled that year. Um, so it was tough to, you know, really get exposure and, you know, show these teams what I'm able to do against, you know, pros or the same kind of peer group that I was in already. Um, so it was kind of tough, you know, to get my name out there and because you know, it was kind of quiet. People are overseas. They're already working and they're focusing on that. So it was hard, but I just stayed in the gym, um, just worked every day, found a good trainer, a good group of guys to be around and, you know, I just locked myself in there and just kept working whenever that next opportunity would arise. And so at this point, did you have any communication with an agent uh, or anybody that was trying to get you started somewhere? Uh, we, we know that we're going to get to the TBT because that actually was kind of uh, at least partially instrumental in getting you started. Mm-hmm. But during this period of time where it's really tough to navigate it, were you doing it on your own or did you have an agent at that point in time? Yeah, so I had an agent at that point in time. And, you know, we were really thinking about the G League route at that time, you know, coming out of college. But like I said, COVID also affected that as well. They, I think they ended up doing a bubble or something for the G League that year. And then they had a draft coming up, but that got pushed all the way back to, I think, November. And then usually instead of the three rounds that they have, they only did one round. And, like, the next two rounds were just, like, they ended up not picking anybody. So after that, you know, that was really – you know, it's kind of hurt me a little bit, you know, because I wanted to get there, you know, have the NBA background and be there. But at the same time, I said, look, I'm still, you know, could be a professional basketball player. I can still make something out of this, make a career out of this. So that's why I started to turn more towards the overseas route. And, you know, I ended up uh, finding a nice team in Israel and I was able to get started there. Thanks to SeatGeek for sponsoring Expat Hoops. We recently became a brand ambassador for them. SeatGeek is a ticket app that takes the confusion out of buying tickets. They offer a 0 to 10 score on each ticket to know if you're getting a good or a bad deal. Green means good, red means bad. You get the idea. It's a really easy way to get tickets to events. Plus, our viewers get $20 off their first ticket purchase with the Expat Hoops code. Click the link in the description to download the app. Remember the code, Expat Hoops, E-X-P-A-T-H-O-O-P-S, all one word, to save yourself $20 off your first ticket purchase with SeatGeek. 
in our house, when we use a VPN, we are sure to use NordVPN. NordVPN secures up to six devices and is compatible with Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, iOS, and even your Wi-Fi router. Plus, it's no risk to your wallet. Head over to their website for pricing or contact customer support 24-7. And remember, your purchase is always safe with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Click the link in the video description to use our code and make sure you're secure with Nord VPN. So before we get to the team in Israel, uh, we we alluded to it just a second ago, but you had a, a good stint with TVT uh, in 2021 with Woco Showtime, mm-hmm. which is mostly the Wofford alums. And uh, we talked a little bit off the pod that that was actually kind of one of the uh, opportunities for you to get some film. Um, and mm-hmm. so if you could kind of take us through that experience and, you know, in terms of one of the better games that you had, how you were able to kind of essentially parlay that into your your film that were, was able to get you your first job in Israel. Yeah, so I think the 2019-2020 season was pretty much ending up. I don't know, the 2020-2021 season was pretty much ending. So it was time, you know, look into the next year, the next group of players, um, you know, trying to figure out what they want to do. You know, this is my time. And I was pretty much in the gym all year that year and just trying to figure out, trying to find myself a job. And that's when um, a team reached out to me. It's called the American Dream. They're going to end up having a bunch of group of people play in the TBT. Um, unfortunately, they didn't get selected. But, you know, they still helped me. You know, they put my name out there for any other TBT teams that would want to reach out and have me. And, you know, luckily I was able to get in touch with uh, Woco Showtime. Like you said, it was the Wofford alumni team. And, you know, we ended up going in there. We went down there to South Carolina. We practiced for about a week. I got to meet those guys, learn about what they did overseas, learn about what they did in college. You know, we just worked hard and just had a goal of winning. And um, we just went there. And, you know, I was able to display my abilities and play pretty well. And that really springboarded me into that job in Israel. And so let's go exactly there. So uh, Israel is, for anybody that's been listening to the pod for a while, uh, it's usually a very beloved destination, um, depending on, um, you know, what league that somebody has been playing in. Uh, everybody doesn't really uh, kind of have like a, a universal story with Israel, but um, in terms of where they are, but in terms of their experience off the court, it's pretty universally beloved. So um, even though you're starting in Israel's second tier league, still a high quality league, good, good place to start. Uh, what was your experience like off the court? Um, it was great, you know, me being a religious guy, um, I was able you know, to be in the Holy Land, be able to see the sites, um, some of the cities and stuff that you see in the Bible. So and that was just real spiritual in its own sense. But also the teammates that I had over there were great. Um, they were a great group of guys that we were able to put together. And another American that I had, you know, we're still close to this day. Um, and then we ended up having one of my friends that I um, met during that summer. Um, he ended up joining my team later during the season. So. It was just cool to be able to go with those guys, you know, travel to different cities, you know, just explore the beautiful country that's um, out there, try the different foods and stuff. So it was pretty much, it was a really great time that I had out there off the court. And so uh, on the court, take us through the team that you played with uh, and what your experience was like there, obviously uh, getting used to being overseas and being a professional now, um, you know, it might be a little bit different of experience with the college facilities and college amenities, uh, and mm-hmm. going to overseas, but take us through what it was like on the floor and with that particular club. Yeah, um, well, this club was a third division team previously, and they just moved up. They won their championship, so this was their first year in second division. So we were able to, you know, get a team together, and um, it was it was nice. It was a good team. We, uh, we bonded well on the court. We bonded well off the court. Um, it didn't you know show up in the rankings. I think we we're like one place out of the playoffs, but you know, it was good to be able to. You know, practice at a professional level, um, learn the different overseas kind of games and different schemes and stuff compared to college. Um, that really laid the framework um, for what you know, I was able to apply for this year. And, you know, the coaches, they helped me out. We watched a lot of film. Uh, the guys off the court, we talked a lot, you know, going over scouting reports, going over the plays and stuff. So just be able to, you know, be a professional and practice that every day, you know, it was just something I fell in love with. And so getting into the real basketball nerd aspect, take us through a little bit. Uh, what is exactly the difference between those college schemes and, and the overseas schemes that you're talking about? Like what's kind of the examples that you could give us? Well, you know, overseas has a bunch of different sets, you know, whether it's the zipper, um, just a bunch of sets that, you know, a lot of teams are on the Spanish that a lot of people are used to. Um, overseas, depending on where you are, you know, it's more physical. 
um, more physical, you know, bumping on the screens, bumping through, uh, on ball the defense is kind of more physical. Um, and then also, you know, just the IQ, like you want to be able to find the mismatches, um, the high, low passes and stuff like that. Um, it's tough. It's a man's game. You know, it's a man's league. You know, playing over there, you're playing against people that are trying to feed their families at the same time. So just, you know, people have different mindsets out there, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough game to master and it's definitely a fun one to play. And so uh, played well in your first professional season, uh, laid the groundwork for where you are today. Uh, kind of moving up levels is something that we kind of consistently talk about on the pod. Uh, mm-hmm. I believe you are the first guest we've had in the new uh, new BNXT league, which is essentially combining Belgium's league and the Netherlands. Uh, I think we've had people before in the past that have played in each one of those countries' leagues, but it was before they decided to merge back in 2020. So take us through where you are today, uh, what you see in the league in terms of the quality of competition. I think we talked a little bit off the pod about how it kind of gives you a little bit more of a uh, international com- competition aspect, having to travel and be against other other teams in a technically different country. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll defer to you. Yeah, so you know, each year, you know, my goal is just, you know, take a jump up, you know, just keep elevating my game, keep elevating the level. And I think this is a good jump for me. Um, it's definitely more difficult, um, more physical, like I said, as another level. Um, I think there's 10 teams, 10 teams total in here. So, like, each team that you play, you know, they're going to know your plays. Um, they're going to know your play style. They're going to know the scouts and everything. So, to be able to still play against them while they know all that, you know, it's just a challenge in itself. But, you know, the B, the B next is different, you know. Um, they split it up. So the top five after each league, the top five Belgium, the top five Netherlands, after they play their domestic play, they'll join in their own league. So then you'll play another 18 games. And then they'll have the Belgian uh, playoffs. And then they'll have the B next playoffs on top of that. So it's just cool, you know, be able to still play a little um, international basketball while also playing, you know, in a really top tier league um, in Belgium. So, you know, we're right now, we're still in the domestic phase. Um, we still have about seven games left. Um, we're still trying to fight to get into that top five, which I believe we will. But you know, that's the goal, you know, just to get to that top five goal league and be able to, you know, play against the top five teams in Netherlands as well. So uh, if you would tell us about your current stop in Belgium. Uh, team name, because again, like we said off the pod, I'm terrible at pronunciation. Uh, I could give my attempt at it. But tell me what it's like playing for this particular club uh, in this particular city and what the fan interaction is like uh, with you. Yeah, so the club I'm playing for now is Belfius Mons Heinau. You know, when I first got here, I kept saying Heinau, but, you know, it's French, so I don't think they pronounced that T at the end. So um, we're a team in Mons, Belgium. We're about, like, 30 minutes from the border of France, so that's pretty cool to be able to know, go to France and sightsee and stuff like that as well. Um, it's a great organization. Um, the coaching staff is great. You know, they push you to be your best every day. Um, they don't want you to be average. Um, you know, they try to be, try to make you the best player they can be on and off the court. You know, that's something that, you know, you really want when you're you know, over here by yourself um, playing basketball. You just want people that want the best for you. And um, my teammates, we got great teammates, um, people from all over the place. You know, we got our Belgian guys, our Serbian guys. Um, we got some people from the um, U.S. as well. So it's cool, you know, just to have them on our side. Um, but it's a good group of guys. We work hard every day. Uh, we try to get better in every aspect. And, you know, it's just a great organization. They care for the people. They care for the players. And, you know, the fans are great as well. Uh, we get pretty good fan turnout at our games. You know, they're cheering. They have their signs. Um, the kids come around. They want autographs after the game. And um, the club makes sure that we interact a lot with them, you know, after the games, you know, greeting the kids and, you know, talking with the fans and their families and stuff. So it's just a really good atmosphere to play in. And so this is a little hard for you to predict, but since you're only in your second year and like we said, working your way up um, and earlier on, we kind of talked a little bit about how your, your career goals were more centric of the NBA. And I'm, I'm sure that that dream is not necessarily uh, completely gone away, but in terms mm-hmm. of your navigating your overseas career, uh, is there any place that you're looking to play and kind of what trajectory you're looking to be on overseas, uh, you know, barring any sort of NBA interest? Um, you know, I would, you know, I speak Spanish a little bit, so I would love to you know, play in Spain, maybe top division Spain, or also even just go back to Israel, play top division Israel. But, you know, also I know Belgium, I was right between France and Germany, and I know those are also two very good leagues. So 
Um, yeah, those would be my top four that I would probably say internationally, probably Spain, um, Israel, France, or Germany. Just try to go over there and play against some good competition. And so this is actually also another kind of maybe interesting or difficult question for you, uh, because again, NBA, we all know what it is and it's kind of self-explanatory, but um, one mm -hmm. of the things going back to like when you're getting your evaluations in terms of what you're saying you could do in college, you could play one, one through four uh, and kind of what you know about the overseas game now, all things being equal, which again, it's not necessarily equal with the NBA, but all things being mm -hmm. equal which way would you prefer to play? Like if basically if they, you know, they expanded or something like that, or the money was equal and everything, would you actually prefer to play overseas because of the way the, the game is played there? Um, I would still say I'd like to go um, back to the U S you know, playing the NBA for something like that. Uh, you know, just to be back at home, you know, close to family and stuff like that, you know, being overseas, is it easy? You know, it is a big sacrifice, but you know, at the same time, it's just something I love to do. Uh, it's basketball. I'm traveling at the same time. So, you know, either way, I can't go wrong. I'd be happy having a great overseas career. Even if I haven't seen the NBA, I'd be happy with that as well. So it's just good to get it, you know, try it out now and see how much I like it. And so far, I'm liking it. Well, that's great to hear. And I think that we're going to be hearing a lot more from you uh, in the years to come. Uh, certainly appreciate you sitting down with us today. was wondering if you had a little bit extra time and do a few expat extras with us. Oh, for sure. For sure. Definitely. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, you could probably just stick with us. It'll probably be the next video that plays. But if you're listening to us, feel free to drop over to our YouTube channel where you can find the expat extras that are only available on YouTube. And again, Keith, thanks so much for joining us for the regular portion of the pod. Thank you so much for having me. You know, it was a great time you know, just chopping it up. Hello, and thanks for watching. Be sure to give the video a like and you can watch more videos over here. Uh, you can also click subscribe over here so you're notified when we have new content here on Expat Hoops.